Treasure. And Pinlet on W4CY. Radio. 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 Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. Tarot card show fool Giving everything to you Definition of insane And I do the same things Every single fucking time And expect the shit to change Got the death grip hold Way too weak to finally let this is Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm excited about our next guest because she is a powerhouse with some great music, and we're going to check it out. So let's welcome to the show Farah Naz from Fading Nemesis. How are you? I'm doing well, Dean. Thank you for having me on today. Well, thanks for being here. And first thing I have to ask you right off the bat, did I say it all correctly? Because the worst thing radio people do is butcher people's names and band names. <laughs> well, I did give you grace because if you were to really say it like a Pakistani, it would be Farah Naz. But See? you said it, Farah Naz, which is great. <laughs> See, look at that. I'm glad you said it, though. Say, I go on tour and I do uh, radio coverage at music festivals, and I always have the artists say it. Like... You can't do that on a phoner, but in person you can. <laughs> and and they always, first of all, then you know you're never going to, you know, mess up their name. But second of all, they always say it better. And so did you. Well, you know what, Dean? Here's the thing. I grew up in Texas, so people call me Farah, And if they didn't get it, I would say Farah like Farah Fawcett. So it, I, I respond to anything and everything. So I'm good. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? You may or may not like what I'm about to say, but when I was a kid, I was totally into Farrah Fawcett. I was totally into it like uh, she was in Charlie's Angels. I had the Farrah yes. Fawcett bathroom rug, the shag bath bathroom rug, and we Absolutely. had a dog, a Bichon, and I named it Farrah. Oh, my goodness, you even had a dog named Farrah. You know, I, I actually love it because she is such an iconic uh, human being. I mean, she is the iconic, quintessential American uh, female from the 70s. So, right? absolutely great. <laughs> See, look at that. There's the six degrees of separation between me and you right there. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So I want to hear about your background because definitely you come from music. Like, I don't think you could escape music if you wanted to. You know, that's right, Dean. Um, I, I grew up in a home where uh, my mother used to always say that you sang before you spoke, Farah. So I do remember being able to sing a melody prior to even ever being able to form words. Um, and my dad was a sitar player, is a sitar player. Um, but I, so I grew up in a home where music was constantly, it was inundated. It was in the air. Uh, every night when we went to sleep, mom would tuck us in and we could hear dad playing, um, practicing in the back background in the living room for two to three to four hours. So I fell asleep to my father playing sitar. And then um, on a monthly basis, my parents would have music parties where we had greats like Ravi Shankar and you know, many others who would come um, to these gatherings that my my parents would host. So, uh, you know, I couldn't escape it. You're right. And then on the other end, Western music was constantly being uh, piped into my reality because uh, we grew up in a, you know, a home where family was all over the, the world, UK, Canada, um, and we grew up going to English medium schools. And so, there was Western music constantly coming into my ears. I grew up with Judas Priest, Iron Maiden on one side, and the other side was, you know, Indian classical music. So nice. it was brilliant. <laughs> See, I love that. And I love, you know, like, so you can take all those influences from your travels in the world and where you've lived and combine them all into your own unique sound. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
you know, it's the, I mean, it's the diversity, right? Uh, many mm-hmm. times I felt, my whole life I have felt like I haven't fit in just because, you know, again, first of all, I will probably be the first female from Pakistan to ever, um, you know, ha- have any kind of accolades within the rock, heavy rock genre. Um, and so I, everywhere I went, I always felt like I was ahead of my time. And now it feels like that the world is finally ready for the amount of d- diversity and the, the color that is inside of my experiences. So, yeah, it, it definitely does color at all. <laughs> it's true because, you know, we go back to like the 70s and 80s and, you know, you couldn't blend genres much less, you know, music from different Absolutely. parts of the world into one song or one album. And I love that we can do that nowadays because that's the way it should be. You're an artist. You should express yourself, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think the listening ear is ready for it too now. I think with the world becoming one uh, technologically and through the internet and through social media, I think, you know, I have cousins who still live in Pakistan who live other parts of the world. And it's unbelievable how we are all uh, in the same reality because of technology, you know? Um, And so it's incredible. It's it's the right time. (laughs) There you go. So I was at this festival a couple months ago where this dude played, he, he did, he he's he's known for this song rich man north of richmond and uh, it, he was he was in a little pop up as we were evacuated and, and and then and then this comes across my desk and I'm like oh cool and i have to say okay i hope he's not listening not to throw any shade but i liked your version much better <laughs> well thank you Thank you. So, you know, it wasn't a competition when I wrote it, but what I realized that um, his is very, uh, very targeted. Sound is targeted. It, it, yeah. And I don't think he ever meant for it to become so anthemic and for people to take it on as a political song. Right? I don't think he even knew that it was going to do what it did, actually. Um, but so many people were talking about it. And my parents called me. I mean, they're I grew up in Dallas, you know, they listen to Fox News, they do their nightly routines. And my mom says, there's this guy named Oliver Anthony. And she goes, he was on such and such news broadcast. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. This guy's everywhere. (laughs) Everywhere. My parents know about him before I do. So I listened to the track. And you know, and I realized uh, what, what, what was it about the song that caught so many people so quickly? I don't think it was just a political agenda. I think it was an actual, um, it was their voice. It was almost like somebody had given each individual a voice wherever they were, whatever they were, was exhausting them, whatever was, um, weighing them down. They found a voice through that song. And so I thought if this was my song, if I'd written it, where would I take it? And, um, what came out was what you heard. (laughs) I love it. And what, what kind of made you, you know, there's millions of songs you could pick from. What made you pick this one to reimagine your own rendition of it? Um, I, I'm, you know, Dean, I'm very fascinated by uh, the human realm. I, I'm, I'm a bit of a student when it comes to studying humanity. Uh, I've always been that way ever since I was a child. I'd wander off into thoughts for hours at a time, just, you know, uh, contemplating uh, humanity's plight and where they're headed, where we're headed, what we're doing. And so the fact that it caught fire like a wildfire uh, fascinated me massively. And so I thought, you know, here's a wildfire that started on August 9th when the song was released by Oliver Anthony. And what could happen if I released it? What would happen? You know, I wanted to actually join the wildfire and say, and say, okay, those people that wouldn't listen to it because it's limited by a genre um, what if what if it went into my genre? What would it do, and what could it do, and c- could I bring the same depth out of it um, that people have felt uh, through Oliver Anthony's? And I think that, so that that tempted me very quickly, and and that's why why I chose to do it. I love it, and one one thing I love about it too is okay. So to me, especially I I go in uh, to all different countries and all over the U.S. to these music festivals, mm-hmm. do radio coverage. Mm-hmm. And there's one thing I find through doing all of that 
is that no matter mm. where I am in the world, there's one unifier where everybody's included, and that's at a music yes. festival. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Music is the universal language. Seriously, you could get you could take people from 15 different countries who, who sp- you don't speak a lick of, of the other person's language, but you turn on songs and they will absolutely feel like they've known each other and they can relate. So No doubt. And then even the, it, it always it's like amazing to me that you can go to another country and a person that doesn't speak any English at all will still know the words of a song, but it gets even better. I was with somebody, I think it was like two days ago. Oh, it was uh-huh. with, I was with my brother and, and uh-huh. there was live music and it was in a different language and I was uh-huh. singing it and he goes, do you know this song? And I'm like, no, but I like it. And he's like, so how do you know the words? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I just do. That's something I do. <laughs> well, there's there's a band called Slaughter to Prevail. They're Russian. Uh, but, you know, they do some songs in English, but then they just belt it out in Russian. And I swear, I can sing every word, and I don't speak Russian. Right. You know, it, but, it, but it comes out. And then also, you know, Lacuna Coil with Christina oh. Scabia, when she was first starting out, she didn't speak English very well, but all her songs were in English, and you'd never know that she didn't speak English. So, you know... I- I know, yeah, right? Music allows you to translate in a way that no no other language can. It's so true. And you just mentioned two bands I absolutely love. But another example, too, is the Scorpions. They originally oh, only absolutely. spoke German. And then even yes. there was, I remember in the 80s that apparently they were deaf, too, like from playing so yes. loud all the time and still could play great without even being able to hear themselves. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> so there you go. There, there you have it. And, you know, it is like to me, music is the biggest therapy for you, the artist, for me, the listener. And, and, and it is the one, I think, safe place in the world that all the bull crap that everybody's arguing about doesn't even exist. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it is definitely that, that language that can create peace among hum- the human spirit that nothing else ever can and will, I don't believe, you know, it's, it's about resonance. It's about a beat. It's about, it's about so much more and it climbs in. It's so, it's such a transparent space. So it, it, it definitely has no agenda attached to it. That's another big thing with music. No agenda is attached to music. Exactly. So, and, and, you know, yeah. I say instead of having wars, we should solve it with a battle of the bands. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and you're going to love this. Okay, you ready for this? I've said this all along. I think we should get a re- rid of American presidential elections and just have a wall of death. <laughs> and, and have a what? Say that again. You cut a, wall of, a, what? a wall of death. And, and yes. the winner of the wall of death becomes president of the United States. I like it. <laughs> we could start a petition. Let's do it. I know, right? <laughs> Listen, we couldn't be much worse off in that respect. No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> so tell everybody how they connect to you on socials, on the web. Check out all your music, buy your merch, all that good stuff. Yes. Well, we, again, are just starting out. So it's been a journey of coming back for me, coming back. You know, it's a resurrection time for me. So um, you can go to fadingnemesisofficial.com is our website. You can engage with us there. Um, Merch store is there. We are just now bringing it all to life. Uh, A lot is happening creatively. Uh, Also on all the socials, uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Facebook. just look up Fading Nemesis. You'll find us immediately. Um, you know, just trying to absolutely connect with the people and can't can't tell enough can tell everybody enough how honored we are to be able to do this uh, for them and with them. So, well, we're honored to have your music because it is badass, and uh, <laughs> I think everybody needs to check it out. And then you even have you know the the uh record set for release in spring of 2024 so definitely people definitely have to connect so they can look out for that 
Absolutely. And once the record is uh, set to release, we will announce it. And then we're working out right now the tours and the festivals for summer uh, of 2024. We had the privilege of doing a couple of shows with Peyton Parrish uh, just to test out the album. And and, and the people responded amazingly well. So I'm looking forward to going out on the road and taking the record out to the people uh, live and face to face. I love it. I can't wait. And uh, thanks for all you do for us with your music. And thanks for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thank you so much, Dean, for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on WCY Radio.